Hi, this time I'm gonna remake a famous Commodore 64 city track, Warhawk by Rob Hubbard, on this a Texas Instrument TI-82 calculator from the early 90s. I'll start with explaining a bit on how sound is generated on these things, followed by the actual song. So feel free to jump ahead if you just want the beautiful music. Here's the Commodore 64. It was released in 1982 and came with the sound chip 6581, also known as SID. It was designed as a low-cost audio solution, but actually ended up redefining the concept of sound in personal computers. The chip has three voices, each with a wavetable oscillator covering four waveforms, as well as an envelope generator. Everything can then be routed through an analog multimode filter. More advanced features are available as well, but these are the basics. SID sounded great and was one of the reasons for the huge success of the C64, which later became the best-selling personal computer of all time. Now, here's the Texas Instruments TI-82. It's a standard graphing calculator released in 1993. It has no sound chip. However, it does have a serial port with a 2.5mm jack. The purpose of this port is to connect it to another TI-82 or computer for backing up data and programs. Digital 1s and zeros are passed back and forth on this port over two signal lines, one for transmission and one for reception of the data. But if we instead connect a speaker to the transmission line and repeatedly flip the ones and zeros, the speaker will produce a square wave. This is called one-bit audio, and in this incarnation it is similar to the way an old PC beeper works. Unfortunately, this can't be done using the calculator's built-in and slow TI Basic language, but thanks to some specially crafted hacks, it's actually possible to use low-level assembly language, which enables full control and precise timing of the port. Using these tricks, we can even flip the direction of the other line and by connecting a second speaker, produce another square wave for stereo sound. But what if you want more than one note in each speaker, mixing multiple channels or get polyphony? Well, this is actually possible using a technique called pulse interleaving. It's based on the fact that when a digital signal switches its value from 0 to 1, which is more or less instant, the actual speaker cone can't keep up and takes a while to travel. And if we very rapidly switch between the two levels, it's possible to trick the speaker into a position somewhere in between. This thereby produces a lower volume level, which is the basis for mixing several tracks. So, in order to mix the three channels in this example, the audio engine will interlace between them by slicing fast in small segments, building up a new signal pulse train, which thereby, to some extent, resembles the mixed output. So even though it has no sound chip, the calculator can now produce multi-channel, one-bit stereo sound. The method discussed is the basis for the sound engine in Houston Tracker 2, a great sequence of software application for TI-82 and compatible models. It's open source and has been developed by Utz of Irlicht Project. A link to it is in the description. Used on Tracker 2 has three tone channels, square waves, each with a programmable duty cycle, and one drum and FX channel. The channels can at any time be panned left, center, or right. Per song, it stores up to 128 note patterns and 64 drum and FX patterns. Every pattern has 16 steps, and a song contains up to 256 pattern rows. In addition to all this, it also supports two user-defined one-bit samples. I used basically all of the features described above in the song I will soon play for you. One of the great Commodore 64 SID composers of the 80s was Rob Hubbard, and the title music of the game Warhawk is one of my absolute favorites. It was actually heavily inspired by the song Unknown Planets by John Keating from his 1972 album Space Experience. Both versions are also linked in the description. Soon time to play my Youth on Tracker version of this song. Let's fire it up by starting the shell Crash, which contains the hack that can load the actual app. There, selecting HD2 will start it up and load the latest used song, which in this case of course is Warhawk. Here's the main screen, a matrix which shows the song sequence structure. The first column is a line number, whereas the rest of them corresponds to a channel and shows which pattern should be played at that slot. The first three are note channels, whereas the fourth one is the shared drums and effects channel. Pressing the second button opens up the pattern editor, where we see the 16 steps, in this case musical notes. If we open up a drums and effects pattern, we instead see four numbers. Uh, the first one corresponds to a drum or a sample, the second one is an FX type selector and the remaining two holds parameters for that effect. 
Typical effects could be a setting and panning position, a duty cycle, or a pitch slide. It can also be a pointer to another pattern, which is the case when we want more than one effect per step, or when we want to trigger a faster pegio. Some patterns can even hold one bit sample data for the use of specified samples, like, like this one, uh, which is actually a short snippet of the drum sound from the original C64 song. But going into details on how that is done would be a story for another video. Lastly, over here we see some global variables containing things such as the tempo and overall status. Since the TI unfortunately can't update the display while it's playing the audio, I have created a little visualizer of my own to make the tracker display come to life. The screens I just described are now appearing, and when an effects pattern triggers another pattern, they will briefly appear here in the middle. I've listened very carefully to try to mimic every single note and part of the original C64, so enjoy! <laughs> 